Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are at another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. And I have Sean Shirk here with me this morning, my uh, one of my new partners and uh, right. partner in crime. You're a partner in crime <laughs> this morning. That's what you are. Yeah. We are on episode number 261. We're recording a little bit early on Facebook because uh, Sean has a meeting this morning. And uh, we're going to just... Uh, just blitz it out this morning. So the name of today's podcast is Things You Can Do Today to Start an Extraordinary Creative Real Estate Career. Here's a description. Turning ideas into action. Hmm. Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich said, Thoughts are things. The human mind is an amazing tool. Not a day goes by that our minds aren't filled with thoughts and ideas. But, and it's a real big but, Sean, <laughs> how many of these ideas and thoughts get dismissed daily? So I beg you to ask yourself today, how creative are you at applying an idea to your life? Will this idea stay long enough with you and clear enough for you to take action. In this podcast, we will be talking about focused actions you can take today so you can become more useful and powerful as a creative real estate entrepreneur. Truth is, a big idea can command attention, but it takes a big promise to fuel a movement or fortune from creative real estate activity. The source of power is in proportion to the greatest number of good to the greatest number involved. In short, what can you do today to take this idea of steady real estate income from an idea to having results from clear and define actions that most won't attempt to do. Don't we know that? Most won't <laughs> attempt to do. But instead, make more excuses and justify why they haven't done it. So uh, just before we get started, let me do a little bit of housework here. So uh, we normally record this podcast on Facebook at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, uh, Thursday mornings. However, uh, I'd like to give a forewarning that the next couple of months, uh, Peter's on a on a sabbatical. Uh, he's off on a, on a retreat uh, at 70 years old and made a bunch of money. He he figured he would go for it, Sean. So for he's off doing his thing. So Can't we're gonna mix it, it exactly. We're gonna mix it up. Um, Sean's gonna help me do a bunch of podcasts. Uh, I'm actually gonna have my daughter. And uh, I'd like to officially announce, not, not totally officially, but starting next podcast, which will be podcast number 262, uh, I was, uh, I'm going to tell a short story here, what I should, shouldn't be doing. I was thinking <laughs> I was going to have a contest with my coaching, private coaching clients, that the most, uh, have, a, have a contest that the most amount of people or coaching clients that went into houses would win a slot or an interview, which really would be a 45 minute coaching session with me here on the okay. podcast. And then you were like, why would you just limit it to private coaching people, Bill? That's right. <laughs> Open it up. Yeah. So he's like, come on, let's get some of these people out there. Let's dare them to go talk to sellers. That's and I'm right. Like, oh my God. This is so cool. So uh, I, I'm officially warning you today that we are going to be doing that. What I want to do is I want to create a little, uh, like a little sales page, not a sales page, like a, like a, a place to go register. I'd like mm -hmm. to at least get some people registered. You don't have to register, but I'd like to, uh, if you register, I'm going to give you some extra bonuses if you win. So uh, you could just 
uh, go out there and, you know, and, 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 you're going to have to prove to me. You can't just say I was in five houses this week because <laughs> uh, we're going to interview you and like what happened in the house and what did they say and what did you say? So, you know, you can't like fake it, fake it to make it. You, you, you can't just take pictures in five different rooms in your house and that counts as five different houses. Oh, the- <laughs> Sean, you're giving them ideas. Stop. <laughs> so uh, anyways, we're going to release that next week. My point in telling you all this is that we're going to stir things up the next couple months. I'm going to rattle the, the cage. The, the cage. We're going to get Sean to help us. We have some cool shows coming with Sean. Uh, he's called the builder because uh, the reason, the way Sean caught my attention was with this book called the rocket fuel. Yeah, I got it back there. <laughs> so, so Sean was pretty clever because he was a coaching client and he was like, we started talking and he bought and mailed me a copy of it and said, Bill, read it and then call me, <laughs> <laughs> which was clever on his part. So, uh, you know, what the, what, what the, uh, what the book talks about is I'm way off topic here is it talks about having uh, two people in an organization. There's a visionary and the integrator. Uh, right. So Sean in our relationship is the integrator. Yep. He's uh he's uh he's uh, like Emma, he's geeked out left right and center. <laughs> he knows how to run systems and how to get all that stuff done. So uh and obviously uh I have trouble doing that cuz I'm the innovator. So we kind of get along good. Uh not kind of, we get along good. Yeah yeah. So so uh anyways, there's my long housekeeping thing. Uh so basically uh, we're going to change things up. If you're not if you're not used to listening to the podcast, uh, or you feel, feel like it was getting boring, uh, or even have some questions or want us to cover some stuff, you should definitely let us know. But the next couple months, the summer of 2021, we are going to rock it, and we're going to we're going we're gonna to have some fun. Also, there's a link inside of the chat wherever you're listening. I'm sorry, a link inside the description of wherever you're listening. I've not changed it. As soon as we uh, get off this call, I'm actually going to give uh, Sean the username and password to uh, how we, uh, where we put that link in, and we're going to start changing that. So over the next uh, couple months, there's going to be some amazing goodies in there. I'm not going to tell you what they are; they're just going to be hidden goodies. So you, you should, you should click on that link because uh, mm-hmm. it's liable to change every week, and I might be giving away some extraordinary shit in there just for clicking on the link. So make sure you do that. And lastly, make sure you uh, you uh, subscribe to us wherever you're listening to us and you like us. And if you want to leave a testimonial, go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com. <clears throat> so, Sean, today uh, yeah. I'd like to start off with posing our listeners with a question. All right. What kind? This is for the listeners now. What kind <laughs> of what kind of hero are you known as? Or even better, what kind of hero do you want to be known as by the most amount of people? Right. Think of this. Somewhere, there's a perfect place for everybody. But it isn't often the obvious place or first place you enter. Right, which is why I believe me, Bill Hawthorne, <laughs> I believe a majority of my listeners and people that buy stuff from me and my crowd or my congregation, as we call it, uh, for the real estate education business, is is a cer- certain group, and they didn't, you know, they're, they're usually 40, 45 years and older. Not everybody; it's just the the majority of them. And the reason why is because they didn't start off in life wanting real estate as their income stream. Mm-hmm. So a lot of our listeners uh, have stumbled across or decided to use or researched real estate later in life. Yep. Now, I feel like I'm preaching to the wrong choir because you're, <laughs> you're like, what are you like, 25 years old or something like that, or 20? Yeah, 20, 26, 26, 26 years old. Yeah. So, so here I am talking about this older group, and 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 I got Sean here. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, <coughs> seriously, I don't I don't think of you as a 25 year old or a 26 year old. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I mean, you're you're definitely a forward thinker. So how long have you been doing real estate? Like a uh, year or two? Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe a, a year and a half. I read uh, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and uh, you know, just really wanted to get into you know generating a passive income stream. And you know, I I basically went through the list of what I wanted to do as far as do you know if I start a business. You know, I just wanted to get out of the nine to five, and you know, I just uh, you know found you know slowly went to real estate. I found bigger pockets, and then uh, you know I found out about house hacking, and it, it it's an evolution. I didn't just wake up one day and buy five houses. I right. mean, it it was a process. It was a grind. It was a, a ton of small actions, and you know I, I've only been doing it for a year and a half. And um, you know, you you helped. Um, I I think it's easy for people to or it's easier to get to the phase of buying one house. I think it's very approachable, but as far as when I started to try to buy more than one house a year or buy a house without, you know, what I ran into is like, okay, I could, you know, to get financial freedom, I need 20 houses, right? And okay, how long does it take me to buy a house? Well, if you're saving 25% down, it, you know, I save all my income. I can buy one house every three years. And I start, I, I, you know, you know me, I'm, a, I'm geeked out. I make an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, when can I retire? When can I sit on a beach and just collect my passive income? <laughs> and say I didn't have kids, I didn't send them to college. It was just me, selfish, in my underground bunker, not spending any money. It was like 45, 50. I was like, that doesn't that doesn't work. It doesn't it just doesn't work. So, um, and so I was like, I found you, and uh, you know, found out buying money, buying real estate without much down is real. It's not just like one paragraph. Before I met you, it was just one paragraph in a book that was just glossed over. Like, oh, you, it, there is this thing called a lease option. There is this thing called seller finance, but don't worry or about subject it. Subject two. Or subject two. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some people do it, but it's mostly like it's not not really a thing. So just <laughs> just save up your money, do a conventional, be safe, and you know, it, it just real just shocked my world when I found like. Yeah, just see you're you're doing it and we're doing it and it's real. So, Brad Turner's a really super guy with bigger pockets, but he's ultra conservative. He's ultra, oh, yeah. ultra he's, conservative. Yeah. So. If, if, yeah, if you wanna if you wanna buy one house every three years and then have a portfolio in twenty five years, it's perfect. But yeah. if you if you want to get somewhere fast, it's just not gonna do it. So Sean, I tease you. We're we're so off script right now. I got to wing it back here in a second, but <laughs> yeah. But I tease, I tease in our group because you're with me quite a bit these days, right? You're, yeah. You're, we put a course together, and we're like yep. partners in a handful of deals, and we have an LLC together, and all that stuff. You've like, yep. You've done you've done things with me that I've not let others to do for 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still don't know why, but I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm not going to stop and smell the roses. I'm just going to enjoy them and keep going, right? Yeah, just, just so, keep drinking that drink I give you every morning. And you'll, you'll, you'll <laughs> breathe that air I pump into your bedroom. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, uh, I tease that you're a rocket scientist. What, what are you actually – what's your real job? Uh, well, right now I do uh, – I'm a project manager – I start off as, you know, I start off as an aerospace engineer. And then, uh, again, I like this. I gravitated towards the system side of things. I like the manager role. I didn't like to, you know, be an individual contributor. So uh, now I, you know, I manage a team building a, a flight control for the, the next generation uh, Kiowa helicopter. So all, all nerdy, all nerdy stuff. And then uh, I'm also a. Uh, a military intelligence officer in the army. So I got a bunch Mil of stuff going on. Military intelligent officer in the army. <laughs> okay. We'll yeah. leave that one alone, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, don't, yeah. I always don't get tell cheese. us that one. <laughs> yeah. Intel intelligence and army doesn't mix, but uh, <laughs> so they tell me. Oxymoron. All right, Sean. Yep. So anyways, this kind of walks us into where I want to go today, right? Okay. Actually right in the front door of, 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 uh, what a real estate entrepreneur can do to become more productive and useful with creative real estate. Okay. Uh, perhaps a more um, interesting and instructive, maybe less commonly talked about and written about factor in creative real estate investing is the entrepreneur's ability mm -hmm. to uniquely capitalize on their time and place. 
definitely. A little bit profound, right? So it's mm-hmm. it's it's the ability it's the ability of an entrepreneur, a real estate entrepreneur, to uniquely uniquely capitalize on their time and place. Now, right. before I go much further, and I and I you know read what I wrote because it's what I should be doing. This <laughs> is totally this is totally cause and effect, pro proactive or reactive. Mm-hmm. However, you want you want to say it. So, so a lot of people think think that their environment is accidental. They just, oh, well, it was fate. I showed up here. And and fortunately for you or for me or for whoever, I don't believe in that. I believe in no. and, and creating your environment, right? So right. what I'm talking about right now is the entrepreneur putting him or herself in the correct path of progress so that they can get the quickest desired results, right? Right. So if you're on a desert and you want water and there's no water, right? You're not going to walk into, uh, you know, I don't know. You're not going to walk into a laundromat. You know what I mean? Because you don't don't need your laundry cleaned. You need water. You know what I mean? So so let me explain or give you an example. Uh, An untrained person decides to uh, to do real estate and they feel like the best strategy for getting time back, estimating, uh, I mean, eliminating debt and growing retirement funds, they decide real estate's it. Okay. It's a good thought or idea, but here's what happens. We might call this the strategy. Right. So it's just the strategy. But without the correct estimation of effort, and those are powerful words I'm saying right now, Sean. Listen, without yep. the correct estimation, what effort? When you first started, did you have the correct estimation of effort to do transactions? No, no. not I had no idea. Most, most don't, right? No. Or without the knowledge. The newbie goes to the realtor in the MLS, the multiple listing service, looking for deals, right? Not yep. knowing that they need to speak to or deal with or be in the business of motivated sellers to do deals with, right? What they're yep. looking for is they're looking for the house. They think the house is where the deal is at. Now, you've heard me say this a bazillion times. <laughs> I've been to a lot of closings. I've never seen a house close the documents at a closing. <laughs> Not yet. Right? It's always people. Yeah, oh yeah. So so why are you looking for a house? People control or own title to those deeds. They have the rights to those deeds. The, that's what you need is you need to have the person that can sign the deed to you. You know, right. emotionally, logically, and physically, right? So here's the here's the odd part about this this example that I'm giving to you, right? And most mm-hmm. don't know this, but realtors actually take an oath. <coughs> it's in their code of ethics, and they could be disbarred or removed from the system if they reveal their client's motivation, right? Whether that be the seller or buyer. Right. So so here I'm telling you the best and most relevant way or quickest way to make money in real estate is to deal with motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. And this newbie uh, immediately goes to a realtor, which is fine. I mean, a lot of people have made a lot of money doing that, but it's definitely the hard way. Right. You're going to look at it. I think Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki said he looks at 100 properties before he buys one. Well, the reason the reason why is because he's looking at properties. Right. He's not talking to motivated sellers. So really what Robert Kiyosaki is saying when he makes those those statements are I have to look at a hundred properties, talk to a hundred owners to find a motivated seller. That's really what he's saying, right? So <clears throat> the newbie doesn't have the resources in most cases, doesn't have the resources, the capital, the contractors, and and all the teammates to be able to put this together. You know, insurance people, and yeah. you know all the all the different things. 
Uh, and, and you and I are still new and I think you're still learning from that. You know, it's like j just kind of being by my side. I'm assuming I'm being arrogant, but, but just by yeah. being my, by my side, all the little things that happens in a transaction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There, there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of moving parts, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, it comes together. I, I, I'd say, you you know, not to be scared, you know, because you don't don't think you have to know all the that. parts before getting started. I mean, it, just yep. take the next step and it naturally happens. It's just yep. it the first time you do it, it's going to be slower and that's going to get faster and faster. But, yeah, you're, each transaction is different, too. So, right. Yeah, that's right. Which is why I'm coming out with the book called Breaking the Real Estate Monopoly. It's going to have that entire system in there and pretty soon you'll be able to get it. And it's uh, you're going to love it because it's the it's the it's the strategies you should use to get through a, a transaction, right? Awesome. So in other words, this newbie real, real estate entrepreneur, right, is not standing in the correct path of success that's conducive for the newbie without having a serious change in life. Right. They have to change their lifestyle because of this decision that I want to be a real estate investor. And they don't know that they're doing it backwards. What they need to do, what they're asking for, is they're asking for real estate investing to make their life easier, to have freedom and debt-free and retirement and, and, and have freedom. But yet, if they, if, they don't, if they don't think about it correctly, the business just takes over their life. It changes their life. And if you got thick skin and you're stubborn and, you know, all the factors that you need to be when you're a hardcore, badass entrepreneur, you make it. But what's the percentage that don't make it? And this is the big reason why, because, because they're not in the best path of progress for their education and their available resources, and they're asking for prospects that don't qualify for their affinity and their knowledge and their life to come talk to them. Right. <clears throat> right? Which means, and I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes, which means that not all real estate investing is equal. No, definitely not. Right? Which brings me to the second point of today's little talk. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, when done right, acts as the biggest shortcut in the business. And it's okay. not talked about enough. This, this actually comes from the direct mail business. But it's a huge lesson. Okay. So let's call it persuasive geography. Just for a word. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or being in the right place at the right time. Okay. Okay. Or <clears throat> in the most powerful path of progress for the quickest, most resistive and profitable deals you can do based on your current knowledge, resources, and affinity. Okay. Right. Now, you know, because we had, because you've been helping me do some coaching and stuff. You know, some people yeah. just want to do apartments. Some people want to do single family. Some people yeah. want to do leases. Some people want to do owner financing. It's like each one of us gravitate to a, I mean, mine is subject to, right? I have yeah. a lot of affinity for subject to. It's my favorite deal, right? Yeah. And you too. I mean, I you uh -huh. kind of followed my footsteps because I know you talk about subject to all the time. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Obsessed with it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I so, think, uh, yeah, like you said, I think, uh, um, just just being here and be being exposed to your world of other options is the right start right this is the right start to be on that path of progress because right. before you know if your mind's closed to only being able to do MLS only be able to do conventional loan I mean you're not able to get on the path of progress you're not even you know you don't even see it as an option like your right option so just, you know it, that that path or of progress you, yeah it doesn't fit a lot of people's lifestyle. Right. Or you go into and you decide to become a, a, an investor and you'll go into one of the other gurus and they'll like teach you how to wholesale. Well, wholesale died 20 years ago. I mean, the, the new way to do that, you, you're looking to find that motivated seller, the one out of 100 that was willing to take 30 cents or 40 cents on a dollar so you could go make five or 10 grand. Right. They're out there. It's possible. Not in economies like this where it's booming, though. 
Yeah. Right? So, so our new what we talk about is the slot deal, the sandwich lease option transfer, where you're where you're where you're buying an over leveraged property and you're making three, five, ten grand, is much more uh, applicable or easier to do than that. Not to mention you don't need to have. I mean, banks have caught caught on to wholesaling because nowadays that you have there's this new industry called uh, transactional lending. Which yep. means when you do a wholesale deal, you, the, the banks are not letting, letting you assign it to somebody else nowadays. So now you actually have to close on the deal, and then two or three days later, uh, you know, close with your seller, and then two or three days later, close with your buyer and, and make your fees, right? So they they kind of really hurt that business. Yeah, it, it, it's not only Bill. It's not only the uh, like you were saying. It's it's just limiting yourself so much just because instead of, you know, like you, you, you can find a problem and then you can match that problem with the right solution. You just, you have a toolbox and all you have in there is a hammer, you right. know, no matter what you see, you know, you, you could have 10 motivated sellers, but if they don't fit in that tiny box where a cash deal works for them, right. you just have to throw the lead away. And that's, that's how I started. And that's what I got so frustrated because I found, true problems that sh that you know how to solve and i just didn't know how to solve because all i knew right. how to do is throw a lowball cash offer at them and not only that i mean you know if you're trying to build a portfolio the way i see it wholesaling is you're pretty much you're still trading your time for money like a day job you're not building passive income that you're you're still on that treadmill because right. you're in five that five grand one time from wholesale now you're you're looking for your next deal and you just and flipping is the same way you make 25 or 30 grand for six months worth of work and then once you're done you're looking for another deal yeah i mean wholesaling you're, you're making money for somebody else i mean you right. could look at any way you want but that's what you're doing and right. you're not building a portfolio or passive income or anything right so so what i'm talking about here is 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 being in the most powerful path of progress for the quickest and most resistive and profitable deals you can get based on your current knowledge and resources so let me give you an example <clears throat> suppose you're on the phone with a seller okay right and you find out you know however you find out that this seller was on the phone either yesterday or today or sometime this week right was on the phone with their mortgage company and they're behind on payments and the mortgage pump company is threatening to foreclose. Okay. How do you think that seller would act to your, or perform or interact? That's a better word. Interact with your phone conversation. Probably favorable, right? Okay. They're interested. Okay. Or you could go the opposite direction, right? And let's say a day before the day of or the week of, the seller talked to a realtor and found out that the property that they want to sell is worth, I don't know, 30 or 50 grand more than what they thought or wanted. How's mm -hmm. that conversation going to go? Probably far worse if you're the investor. <laughs> right. So, so for somebody like me that has a lot of experience, because I've spoken to thousands of sellers, it doesn't scare me. But when it's your first deal and you're not sure what to do or how to say things, it's harder. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's like the path of progress. What road are you going to travel? Right. Now, if you're going to take one road and you know that there's, you know, rivers and trees and rocks and everything you got to move to get to where you want to go, Whereas the other road has less debris and rivers and mountains and all that stuff. You're naturally going to take the easier road, right? So oh, yeah. that's exactly what I'm talking about. So by consciously understanding your resources and your ability, you can pick the best road. Now, I'm not saying that you stay there. I'm not saying that you're going to make a living. I'm not going to, I'm not saying that you're going to retire from that money. What I'm saying is, is, the best thing you could do is your first three, five, ten transactions and get used to how things work. I mean, Sean, I mean, again, I'm going to go back to it. Yeah. Just doing transactions, every transaction, you learn something. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you could, you could, you, you probably had run into this. Well, I'm sure you don't run into as much, but, you know, we, we do two or three. And I was like, okay, I think I got the hang of this. And then something else would come up. And, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I, I've actually put in the book until you've done 50 transactions, you're not you're not 100 percent comfortable. 
Okay. Right. And I don't want to scare anybody with that. I'm just saying that, you know, until you've done 50 transactions, I don't think you've actually seen anything. And and I've done hundreds and I still, I things still happen to me that I've never seen before because the environment keeps changing. Right. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying here is, is, uh, How will they act in one position as opposed to another position? And the only thing that changed was their environment, right? So where were they before they talked to you? What kind of situation are they in before they talk to you? That's your path of progress. So if you understand that or study that or go through that dilemma in your head, you won't need to spend, you know, $30,000 for a coaching program to talk to a coach every other week for a half an hour. Yeah. Right. You won't need that. You can do your own educational process by just talking to people, which is why I released, you know, a month ago ago and I, and I, and I called it the wrong name, but the reluctant buyer kit, because that, that kit actually helps you get in a house and study the seller. So you know what to do, right. Without buying it. That the reluctant buyer part is, is you're being a reluctant buyer, your seller, so that they can train you. You know, the seller is actually training you, right? So if you don't, all right, so, so let's talk about how you can manage the background of your seller today. Because that's what it is. You got the background of your seller, like what's going on in his life or her life that they're not telling you about and they don't know you. So they're going to put their social personality up and everything's going to be nice and nice. The weather's good. And, oh, thank you for calling me. And they're just so polite. But right below that social veneer, that very thin layer is the bombshell of their life. It's yep. the atomic bomb of their life, right? So if you don't have or want to use your own money, why would you put yourself in the path of progress of, say, rehabs or, for that fact, for sale by owners? Yeah. Right? We know a for sale by owner or a FISBO is a FISBO for sale by owner because they want to save fees right. and get most of the deal or most of the money, most of the money in the transaction. That's why yeah. they're a FISBO. So what's their priority? Their priority is the money. <laughs> That's agreed. right. The most amount of money. Right? So now sometimes they'll let you take monthly payments to get their greedy asking price. Mm -hmm. But the percentage is low. Yeah. Okay? There is a percentage, but it is low. Because we do call for sale by owners, and we do have a script, but here's the magic. The magic of a good... Uh, a good real estate entrepreneur is to do a lot of outflow, talk to a lot of new sellers. But what we don't talk about enough is the ability to pre-screen who's qualified and who's not qualified to get your time. That's right. And your education. Even if you're just listening to these podcasts and have done nothing else but just listen to some podcasts, you have more education than the average bear. Right. You're putting time in and you're like you're like getting smarter. Right. All right. How about we do this? Talk to someone who has an ax who, who, who's been put in an accidental landlord position. Right. So an accidental landlord is is someone that had a house, moved on bought another house thinking they were going to sell this house and that house didn't sell or something happened. There's some complications. And so either they owe too much money or the market turned or whatever. And mm -hmm. now they're renting it just to cover their costs. Yep. So that they can move on with their life. Right. right? The interesting thing is, is that, that what we're talking about here is, is that person has already made up their mind that they're not going to get their 200 grand or whatever the number is, and they're going to take monthly payments. Now, isn't that the best place in the world for you to be? 
is yep. talking to that person. Because what you want to do is you want to talk about giving them monthly payments until you can pay them off. Or or it's letting them walk away. I mean, some some it's like you said. I mean, some people are some people are more greedy than others. But you know, just in our coaching group the other day, you could you could tell if it's need or greed because the woman wasn't looking. You know, when you start talking about monthly payments, she, she you know her her expenses were seven hundred. She wasn't looking for the gap in between. She just wanted her expenses to be met. Which when people say you know how much you like, if they're okay with getting the same amount of money as their expenses their motivation isn't greed. They, they just want to walk away. They want to be done with the right. property. Right. So, so, cause so, so listen to what he just said, guys, just listen to what Sean just said. The reason why is because they've made a decision to move on in life. Yep. And this house is a barrier or a problem or some sort of a heat gut for them to get that new thing. Let me give you let me give you a classic real easy example. You want to buy a new car. Yep. You owe 3500 for your car just as an arbitrary number. Dealership wants to give you 2500 or 2 grand. Mm -hmm. What do you do? So you already got a payment on the first car cuz you owe 3500. Right. So you could buy the new car and take on the new payment saying, well, you know, I got a month before I have to make my first payment. So I'll go sell my car mm -hmm. and pay off the 3500 Right. But then you don't sell the car because it's not as easy as you thought it was going to be or everybody is offering you two grand or 2500 Now you have two payments. What happens right. now? You probably go back or take a bad deal. You're motivated. You're going you're gonna to put money in. You just became motivated, right? Yep. So so wouldn't you say that this is a less resistive seller to talk about doing a rent-to-own or owner financing? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're you're just going to be spinning your tires if you're, you're talking to people that are getting called 20 days, 20 times a day, throwing crazy cash offers at them, and you're not going to get anywhere with terms. Exactly, right? It's inviting or being in a corrective path of favorable results. So all real estate investing is not equal, which is why you want to shift or sift, actually. You want to you want to sift who you run into before running into them. I want Asian food. I want to go buy Asian food. Would I go to a Mexican store? No. Nope. I want a beer. Would I go to a Would I go to a, a a baby clothes store to get a beer? Hope not. <laughs> I mean, you're, yeah, exactly. You're doing this everywhere else. Why aren't you doing it with your real estate? Yeah, and like you're saying, Bill, it's not only not. Uh, it's not only that each property isn't uh, equal, it's each owner isn't equal and each owner situation isn't equal because behind that property is an owner and a motivation. So that's what you're really getting after. Right. So here's what happens in, in, a, court, in, a, short, in a short story here. I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. So a, de <laughs> a deed, a deed is a document that is recorded with the town hall or the city clerk that says this person on the deed, Sean Shirk, has title to this property. So your title is owner. Yep. So the title is the one that makes the decision to change the deed. Just like, like President Obama has the title right now of president. Right? <laughs> Don well, Donald, he, he did. <laughs> oh, Biden. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Biden. Yeah, I'm sorry. That <laughs> was okay. stupid. Yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, that's, that's, that was stupid. Hey, so, some, uh, some people are excited, maybe. <laughs> but they thought they got eight years back of their life. <laughs> right, yeah. So so Donald Trump has the title of ex-president. Right? There's a title. I have a title in my family as father. Right? 
So when you have title to something, you have permission or ownership. So, so that's what you're looking for is you're looking for that person that has title to the deed. In other words, they can change the deed if they decide. And what you're saying is, is it's one thing to know who that is. It's another thing to know their situation and what they're motivated to do with their position of power with the deed. That's right. Right. And when you can do background checks on these people, quote unquote, right, then then you're better off. Right. And just like a criminal leaves evidence because they inherently want to be caught. So do motivated sellers. They leave evidence. It's true. Right. So if you're going to do any kind of investigating, it's not how to do deal structuring. It's not how to talk to sellers. It's how to find out what the background is of your seller and how you can find them. That's exactly and what, right. And what you'll do is you'll start to figure out there's common denominators with these people. Let me give you a real easy one, a real easy one. Finding divorced people. How do you find divorced people? You, you go, go to court. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spoken from a 26-year-old. <laughs> so a good way to do that is to go search for Liz Pendens. What is a Liz Pendens? A Liz Pendens is a, a document that's put against the title that says, hey, there's a litigation here. Before you take this title, you better check it out. All right. You could go on, like in Connecticut, you can go on the judicial site and you could comb through the judicial site and you could look at who's being sued and for what. So go on there and look for divorce people, right? Yeah. Divorce is a great place to go. That's a great place for subject two, by the way, right? Because they just, often they want out or, or at least for deep discounts, right? Yeah. So... That's just one example. Here's another example. Probate. Probate deals. Right? I mean, we just, I just did in the monthly mastery group uh, a month or two ago, a whole thing that you showed me how to do on how to find deceased records. Yep. And not only, not only does the software find who's deceased, but it finds out who's living or, or a good guesstimate of who's living. Yep. And you send them mail. Or call them or wherever you want, yeah. What a good place to go look for rehabs. Oh, definitely. Probate. Yeah, not not only that. I mean, what I, what we ran into is a lot of those probates are, you know, a deceased owner. And, you know, I, I'd hope the most common cause of death is old age. So most of those right. are actually free and clear. So right. not only could you do a, a fix and flip, you could actually do seller finance because a lot of them are paid off. Yeah. If and they don't need probate. money right away. Yeah, you know, if, if they're, they're not, not in probate, probate. yep which yep. is possible, right? Yep. So Good. so here's another one. Here's another one. And we don't do enough of this. I, I ha We have to talk about this, but here's another one. How about if you did a search for quick claims? Interesting. And sent communication to people that just did a quick claim. That means something's going on. That means somebody took their, a quick, it's Q-U-I-T, quit claim. Yep. That means if somebody says, I no longer want any responsibility of this property, I'm relinquishing it and giving it to this other person. Hmm. Right? Something's yeah. going on there. Don't you think that's a good path of progress to be in? If you sent them some like text or, or, or direct mail piece that said, hey, I buy houses. Yeah. Right? By the way, by the way, newsflash. The harder it is to find the deal, the bigger the, the bigger the deal is. 100%. So, so you don't need to go study deal structuring. You don't need to go study all the scripts and all my words and all that kind of stuff. What you need to do is figure out what your path of progress should be, could be, and, and would be best at. And put yourself in that path so that you could be most successful quickly. So for a newbie, we talk about it all the time. For a newbie, I suggest going on, I call it Flake Book, but Facebook, right? Or Zillow and go into the for rent section. 
Just go into the front section. These people have already made their mind up that they're going to take monthly payments. And you and you find the front section, whether it's in, in, in Flakebook or in, in Zillow, right? Yep. And you just type a message. Would you consider renting for a year or two and then sell it to me? And if they say yes, here's what you do. You actually go look at the property, okay? And you're going to rent it from them and then sublease it to your buyer. There's no obligations. I was on a monthly mastery call last night, and one of my guys from Israel has a deal, and he's been hemming and hawing about being a coaching client, and I ringed them out last night because he has a $50,000 deal. He's got a deal that, that that's worth $410,000, and the guy came out at his starting number at selling to him on a, a $349 and is willing to take monthly payments, and it's free and clear. Wow. And he didn't even know he had a deal. Oh He's like, gosh. it's it's too much money. What happens if the market changes? I can't pay three forty nine. Oh my gosh! He didn't he didn't even know he had a deal, which is uh, another story because I I I barked at him because I'm like, dude, you're worried about paying me coaching. You, if you did this deal, you could pay coaching for me for the next five years in one deal, and you're gonna throw it away and don't even know you have it. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I even say that people are worried about the market changing that the number one rule is if, if it cash flows, who cares? Yes, you know, right. you're making 600 bucks a month. It could be worth $1 tomorrow. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. You think that market's going to go down more than 50 grand? I don't No. Well, no, it won't. But even if you, you just want to sleep at night, just, just right. trust the cash flow. You can't, if you have cash flow, you can't go wrong. Right. So going on Facebook, or go, and he found this on Facebook. That's why I'm telling you this That's story. That's awesome. So he went, he went in, and he's just typing for rent, you know, where it's for rent, and just yep. typing in there, would you consider selling for a year or two, and then sell to me? Now, here's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. They already made up their mind that they want to rent. So they're thinking about getting a rent and being a landlord. Now, you come along and say to them, hey, Mr. Seller, I'll pay you every month your rent or a little bit of a discount if you give me a little bit of a discount. But here's the thing. You won't have landlord obligations, and I'll pay you off in a year or two. That's all positive conversation to them. That's all positive motion because, first of all, they probably are an accidental landlord, and they don't want this property anyways, and they're strapped with the landlord obligations, which, by the way, landlord obligations means not just like, like repairs and maintenance and not when somebody's not paying, but when it's vacant, you got to fill it up again. So now, mm -hmm. how many times does that happen? I know that's happened to you, Sean. You know, like you're going along in life and you're doing things, right? Yep. Somebody moves out of your apartment and all of a sudden you got to fill one of your apartments and it disrupts your life. You're supposed to go away with your girlfriend this weekend or you're supposed to do this or you got a wedding coming and you're dealing with, I got to fill this apartment because every day you don't fill it, it costs me money. Right. And it's just a disruption in your life. So that's being, that's landlord obligation. So imagine if you could shed that and still get your check. Right. Exactly. Here's the trick. The more of these messages that you do, right? Like, would you consider being, uh, would you consider renting for a year or two and then sell to me? The more of these messages you do, the faster you'll find a deal. It's just the law of averages but calculated correctly, right? So here's, here's the magic, and, and here's the reason why any of my coaching clients or any of anybody that I deal with is not successful. Number one reason, number one reason, they don't talk to enough new sellers. Yep. They don't contact enough new sellers. It's not, and that turns into making offers, but they don't contact enough people. Do this drill. Do this drill today. If you're listening to me right now, do this drill today. Walk out your front door. Take a left. Take a right. First person you see, I don't care if it's 10 feet or 10 miles. First person you see, say to them, hey, you know anybody around here that buys houses? And if they say, no, I don't. Or there's a realtor over there. You know you haven't done your job because they don't know about you. Hmm. 
They don't know you exist. So even if there was a deal out there, they wouldn't bring it to you because they don't know you exist. You are, my friend, my listener right now, you are in a non-existent state. You are in a non-existent state of existence. They don't know who you are. And you're not in a path of progress. It's absolute mental masturbation on your part. You're playing with yourself mentally, thinking that you're a real estate investor. And because your family and the guys at the bar and the guys at the cigar shop where you smoke cigars or the girls at the beauty salon or the you know, the girls at work or wherever your community is, they know because you talk about it all the time, but that's a very small net. That's not enough for you to live off of. Right. You need to get out there and you need to outflow. You need to go to the grocery store and hand them a business card when you check out. When you go to the ladies' bathroom, leave a business card in the bathroom. When you go to the bar, leave a, when you give somebody a tip, leave a business card when you leave a tip. How about this one? When you pay your utility bill, drop a business card in the envelope with check. You need to get out of non-existence because you don't exist to the rest of the world. End of story. And if you want to succeed in this business, you need to get out of the in non-existent state. And the only way you could do that is to, is to let people know, well, contact motivated sellers and talk to them. Let them know you buy houses. Ask them what's needed and wanted in their deal and then give it to them. Yep. That's it. Recognize that you're in a non-existent state and then just go do those things. And it's the only way you can do that. But Sean, I could hear it now. I hear the waves going through my ears and I could feel the tension right now because the listeners are thinking, if I send a text and say, would you be willing to rent to me for a year or two and then sell it to me? What mm -hmm. happens if they say yes? Right. What do I do next? Mm -hmm. And I spoke about it earlier. That's the reason why I created the Reluctant Buyer Kit. And it's a very inexpensive way to get the entire checklist of what you need to do the scripts, the contracts, and everything that you might need in case you find a deal by accident. But the plan is, is that you don't buy the house. You're just there to learn about your seller because when you hone in on who your seller is and who you want, uh, who, who you want to attract, right? Then it'll be a piece of cake. I'm going to do this last thing and then we're going to, and then I have one more thing to say and then well, so I got two more things to say and we're going to end off. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got a dog. Yeah. And he's a stubborn little bastard. We have a <laughs> chihuahua in our family, right? And he's a stubborn. Right, yeah. You go, hey, Fido, come here. Come here, Fido. Come here, Fido. And the dog just sits there and looks at you, right? And, and you're like, oh, I got to take this dog to training school, right? That's the biggest joke in the world. Training right. school. Training school. <laughs> okay. You're going to train a dog. I can train a dog. I'll charge you $2,000 and I'll show you how to train your dog. You know how you train your dog? You find their favorite treat and hold it up in front of them, and then the dog does what, what they what they think you want them to do to get the treat. Yep. So you say, "Come here, Fido," and you show him the treat. He's not listening to your words. Your words don't mean nothing. He sees the treat. He comes running. Sit, right. Fido, and he sits because you have his favorite treat. It's a little crude, but if you did that with your sellers and you held up their favorite treat, they too would have come around it. That's right. So know what that favorite treat is, okay? So studying the buyer, I'm sorry, studying the seller, you'll have to study the buyer too, but studying the seller and knowing what their favorite treat is and hear them tell you what their favorite treat is, or you holding up their treat and saying, here you go, Mr. Seller, and they don't respond, you know they got the wrong treat. So why do you want to do that with, with prospects that you could make $50,000 with. Why not go practice on the suspects and learn from them, which is exactly what the Reluctant Buyer Kit does, okay? And it's got all the checklists. It's actually one of the best products I think I've ever made, okay? 
because it's it's got all these checklists. It's got an in-house checklist. It's five pages long, so you don't miss anything. So if you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash reluctant buyer, you can find it. It's all there. So if you do find one of these people that want to say yes, at least you have the tools to do it. Now, it's not going to make you a living. It's not the full core training, but it'll get you started. Yeah, I, I always thought it, you know, it's it's more so like road to your first deal or, you know, training wheels to your first deal, really. So Sean is 100% correct. He's the one that has brought it to my attention that I named it wrong, <laughs> called the Reluctant Buyer Kit. And we, we do need to rename it. I just have other things going on I haven't done. All right. So lastly, in today's environment, you need, the only way you're going to succeed in today's environment is massive outflow. Yep. And an outrageous follow up to make any consistent or healthy a healthy income. You have to go massive outflow and you have to have excellent follow up. Right? If you don't do that, you're not going to get out of your job and fire your boss. No. Okay? Which is why Sean and I, which is why he's called the builder. He so chose that name. <laughs> which is, is the builder, because we built an automated deal hunting machine. Okay. So if you have more money than time, because some people have more time than money, but if you have more money, and I'm not talking about a lot of money, but if you have money and you want to buy like a little franchise on how we have this automated deal hunting machine and you want to set it up, so that you could show up at five o'clock at night and work for an hour and buy houses. This tool will do that. It's oh. just now being released. It's, it's amazing. We, we piloted it with my coaching clients and Sean, I, I, I'm stunned at how successful it was. Yeah. Yeah. The testimonials watching was just crazy. Yeah. So uh, if you want to get that, then uh, you can go to flippinghousesforrookies.com. It's not released yet, uh, but you can get you can get on the waiting list and be one of the first people to get it because we're releasing it. I think this weekend or you know we're in the middle of July right now. So uh, yep, if you're listening to this after that time period, then you can go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash deal hunting machine. It's it's like a franchise. And it's got all the systems and all the ways to do outflow. It's got all the campaigns in it. It's got all the all the all the the uh, follow up systems in it. It's got everything. It's got full training on how to set it all up. I mean, it's one of those things where you spend a couple afternoons, uh, two or three afternoons. You set it all up, and it just pumps in leads. It just sends in leads. It's just absolutely extraordinary. All right. All right. It's time to go. We're at our peak here. Uh, I wanted to say, uh, like I said before, uh, we're going to change things up. Starting next week, uh, I've asked Sean to help me with some uh, talking about some systems and, and, and what he talks about with a system and why it's important. Yep. Uh, we talked about a couple weeks ago about McDonald's, or maybe that was the, I think that's the breaking, uh, uh, breaking the real estate uh, monopoly book. Um, but we talk about McDonald's. McDonald's makes billions of dollars off the backs of high school kids. How do they do that? Systems, procedures. And when you put those in, you can start to get your time back. You can get debt paid down. You can build retirement, help parents, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. right? And we're going to talk about that over the next couple of weeks. Right? Yep. And, and realize that... Uh, the link this week, I don't know what it's going to be this week because we haven't changed it, but realize that I'm going to kick off this can't, this this new game over the next several weeks, and we are going to put the challenge to you, the person, like the top three people or something like that, that have been in the most amount of houses talking to sellers, whether they have the reluctant buyer kit or not, will win a private, well, it won't be private, will win an <laughs> interview with me a 45 minute interview on this podcast with me helping you with what you said, what the seller said, help coaching you with words, with sentences, what happened, find, finding out about your feelings, finding out about what you didn't know, what you missed, and, and actually set you up so the next time it happens, you'll be in better shape. 
And I want to do a few of those. Okay, so yeah. that's what you're going to win. All right? I think uh, you're forgetting one big thing, Bill. And I think it might let the cat out of the bag here. But, yeah, sure, from the conversation we were talking about, putting yourself on the, the path of progress and putting yourself in front of the right sellers, you know, we, we got a huge thing coming out in, uh, you know, less than a week that uh, you could sign up with right in the description below. We have uh, that week long deal hunting masterclass. Yep. So it's, it's going to be three videos. It's going to show you exactly. I'm, I'm sure there's almost everybody on, on here is thinking, you know, you, you talk about probate, you talk about divorce, you talked about less pen, you talked about taxes. We talked about high equity. You know, how do you find these owners and how do you put them in a bucket? And you talked about how do you apply those? those yeah, bills? but that's only half of it. How do you do all that without giving up your life? Exactly. And that's, spending 10 hours a day trying to find them. How do you do it in, in 30 or 50 minutes a day? Yeah. And we're, uh, we're going to show them exactly how to do it. Yeah. So Sean's right. Uh, you know, we'll get the link, you know, the link is in the description. It's not there right now, but it will be uh, sometime today. The link's in the description. So you can go to those masterclass. There's three videos that we're going to do, uh, probably a fourth too. We'll probably have to do a fourth one, but there's three or four videos. It's masterclass. It's totally free. And you can see what this is all about. We're not asking you to buy anything, uh, until you know everything that's going on. And minimally, even if you don't buy anything, you're going to get a bunch of education in our masterclass program. Okay, so make sure you check that out. Make sure you get in the link. Uh, if you don't know where the link is and you're afraid that you're missing out, just go to Flipping Houses for Rookies, top right-hand side. There's a support ticket there. Just send me a support ticket, and I will send you what you need. Okay, so if you are if you feel like you're missing out on something or you don't know where the description link is or whatever, just go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com, top right-hand side, and it's support tickets, and send me a support ticket, and I'll send you all the goodies. That's right. Sean, thanks for being with me today. Of course. It was a pleasure as always. Uh, and we'll uh, next week kick off some uh, automation stuff. We'll, we'll talk about systems and procedures and, you know, and uh, how you can <laughs> kind of get that under wraps. Yeah. <laughs> cool. you'll, 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 you'll have to promise to stop me if I get too, uh, too in the weeds or too geeky. But Oh, yeah. I, I already, <laughs> I've already experienced that. I know what that's yep. all. I'll yeah, be like, Sean, 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 wait, 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 wait. You're talking to an old guy here. Slow it down. Yeah. <laughs> hey. no, one will, no one will tell you this stuff, though. Yeah, exactly right. All right, cool. Talk to you next next episode. All right. Over now. See you. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.